I would like to officially welcome all of you to the regulars table. Uh, we meet the third Wednesday of each month at this time. Um, I'm Deborah Goldstein. I am here in New York, and I am so pleased to be hosting Uta, Uta Franzen Rausche from Hall, Germany. And Tanya is acting as our incredibly reliable backup today. She is our tech, tech um, backup. And I've been really looking forward to this session since Uta had asked if I would be her host. Um, we'll be speaking about um, her chapter in the Conversational Intelligence book. And to kick it off, to give you a sense of what we'll be speaking about today, uh, we'd love to show you a short trailer that describes Uta's chapter. Transparency as a catalyst for a healthy and sustainable organizational culture. That's the title of my chapter in the book, Changing Conversations for a Changing World. My name is Ute, Ute franzen -Waschke, and currently I'm based in Rochester, Michigan, but soon I will be back in Halle, Germany. Transparency is one of these popular buzzwords that together with authenticity are high up on the rankings of what makes good leadership. But what is really meant by transparency and how does it relate to building a better organizational culture? These are some of the questions I explore in my chapter and how transparency changes our conversations in a corporate setting. I hope you will enjoy reading the chapter. Thank you and bye. I start to dance when I hear that music. So as Uta had explained on the video, her chapter is about transparency. And, you know, I have been thinking about this in such different ways, transparency, in, in general, in such different ways since I read the chapter and then started to talk to Uta about it. Um, I realized that I used to say, I'm an open book. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And after reading the chapter one and then a second time and then a third time to prepare for today, I think about transparency quite differently. So I'd like to ask all of you, if you would drop into the chat box some thoughts about what you think about transparency. Um, what, what do you, where do you think you are in the transparency spectrum from open book, hard on your sleeve to very, very careful about what you share? So I, I'm curious about what you all are um, thinking right now. And then I'll be curious to see how your minds may or may not change at the end of our talk today. So if you would write into the chat box, that would be great. So we have a couple of answers for you already. And uh, Charlotte said, middle of the way. Andrea commented, depends on whom I relate to. Diane has uh, entered guarded. From Ailish, we have transparency is multifaceted. And Gaia, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Depends who I'm with and trust level. And Gianluca, Depending on the context, love to be near open book mood. Mm. And from Marianne, we have situation dependent. Ron has added, oh, sorry, Ron, Len, excuse me. Len has added, when I set an aspiration for a session, it's my way of creating transparency. And Julius commented, transparency versus dissolving into the background versus mimicking into the environment. And then uh, Eva depends middle. Tanya's comment is on the same level. Mida, easier to open with people who are open. Mm, yeah. Wow. So we've got quite a range here. And I, I appreciate Len's comment. When I set an aspiration for a session, it's my way of creating transparency. 
So a second question for y'all, and then I promise we'll get to Uta. Uh, but I'm curious, what is it that, what, what do you think transparent is? Like, what, what what would you describe transparency as? And as I said, Len made a, made a great first stab at that with his example of transparency. So what experiences have you had with transparency? And um, what do you think it is? Would you and like Karen, to read Karen backs that up by saying, I would lean towards transparent. However, I'm now questioning what do we mean by transparency? So let's double click on that, friends. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Uta? <laughs> Julia is saying, trying to make my background transparent. <laughs> A lot of good stuff in the chat box. Yeah. Yeah. The courage to appear as you are. That's poetic. Um, when you saying and you're doing aligns, spirit of becoming forthcoming of equal voice open to creating a shared pool of meaning wow that's wonderful i i look forward to receiving this chat box <laughs> not not preconceived ideas or judgments being in the moment being true to myself while being and my do with my being and my doing looking openly beyond the obstacles i think that what I want to say in a situation to move the needle from res resistance to relationship dashboard. Can we be too transparent? Karen, that's exactly what I thought. I thought that there is no such thing as too transparent. Hmm. So there are great ideas here. And thank you all for, for weighing in on transparency. And just from the answers here alone, there is a lot of, there's, we have a, a, a wide array of thoughts about transparency and a wide array of how we show up. So Uta, may I please ask you, why did you write a chapter about transparency? Yeah, before I answer your question, Deborah, let me say hi to everyone. I'm so grateful that you are all here today. Uh, and that we can double click and expand on the topic beyond the chapter of the book. And the reason why I decided to write about transparency was because it was, it was a constant companion in my corporate work with um, individuals and teams. And I also heard a lot of um, yeah, statements false statements or incomplete statements about transparency. Um, and some of the statements might be true in certain environments, in certain contexts, but yet it's not, it's not as easy as that. As Eilish wrote, it's multifaceted. So um, there is not just one transparency. Yeah. So um, double clicking on this, creating a common understanding of what transparency means um, is, is very important. And it is not necessarily about full disclosure, about total transparency, yeah? Because research has actually shown that total transparency can harm in certain situations and in certain relationships. And um, so we really need to be more precise on that. Um, a lot of times I heard transparency is about, you know, um, telling the truth. Yeah, whose truth? Yeah, I, I mean, truth is always something that um, depends on the eye of the observer, the lens we are looking through, um, the background that we have, the intention that we may have as well. I also heard in the corporate world, transparency is related to giving feedback. And that was something where I was really struggling with, yeah. Um, so, so feedback is a concept that is in any way, in, in, at least in German um, environments, a topic that needs double clicking and clarification. There are lots of um, myths around 
feedback um, out there. And yet that the correlation, that the combination was like feedback and transparency, they go together with something that I thought is um, worthwhile elaborating on and having good conversations around with my clients. And that, that really triggered me or in, initiated um, the interest in, in the topic. And um, yeah, as I, as I was doing that, it was also that through the conversations, um, we got to the point where certain patterns would emerge and certain, you know, yeah, insights would come about for me as, as a coach, but also for, for my clients. And so that was the reason why I decided to write about it and capture all of that. Mm. Yeah, and there's a lot there because as you've just mentioned, there are a lot of situations you got into and you scratched your head questioning about the transparency. And yet, as we've just read all of these different definitions of what people think of as transparency, the word is used all the time. Mm -hmm. And yet, when we use, when each of us use the words, we have our own lens, our own view of what transparency is is and what it means so a, a valiant topic to 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 dis, to delve into and discuss and i'm curious um would you like to read a passage about intention and impact because you had mentioned something about being intentional with your transparency exactly and that was also something um that I saw in the chat box, people were writing about, you know, intention and impact. And that was another positive outcome um, from all of these conversations that um, if we have the right intention, um, it's so much easier to, to handle transparency and, and to get a handle on transparency. So yeah, let me, let me read. And if you want to read along, if you have the book with you, um, we will turn to page 62. And in order to give you some context, um, when I'm talking about intention and impact in the chapter, it is actually reflecting on a transparency statement that I had collected from my workshops from clients. And there was one that was saying, it's too much. If they knew everything, they would worry too much and not work and engage enough. So whatever I read is in that, through that lens, um, we need to look at that. So, if you hear that statement, you could say, yes, management is truly concerned about the well-being of their staff. And one could say management is afraid that engagement levels will drop if the workforce really knows what's on our agenda. So we better not tell them anything at once and we go for the piecemeal approach. So from the intention of management wanting to protect and care about their workforce, two completely different intentions or a hidden agenda could be constructed by the workforce, those that are in listening mode and at the receiving end. And that could thus lead to exactly the behavior management was originally trying to avoid namely reducing engagement levels and performance. If the workforce makes up their own movies in their heads about scenarios, then this actually reduces engagement levels and productivity. And even worse, this could also lead to completely wrong assumptions about what such a hidden agenda may or may not be. So what if transparency was less about content, meaning data and facts, and more about being transparent about intentions? How would that shift conversations and how would that shift how transparency is seen in organizations? And, and that was, that was the, the outcome that really got me started to look deeper into into the topic. Mm. So I'm curious from those of you who have joined us today, um, if you would write into the chat box your thoughts about that last sentence that Uta read, 
how would that shift conversations? How would that shift how transparency is seen in organizations? In other words, if organizations actually were um, were more focused on transparency with intentions, like Len had said, and less about the, de the data and the facts, how would that shift the transparency in um, how transparency is seen in organizations? I'm curious about what's on your mind before Uta um, takes us through her model. Hmm. Finding common ground more easily is what Katrin is, is typing. And I think if you if you are brave enough to speak up, you can also unmute yourself and just have a conversation. <laughs> typing might might take much longer. Len is saying it might make it much more business agenda oriented and then personal agenda oriented. Yeah. I, I really like that comment, especially because uh, of the, the thought of relationship before task. And that is the opposite of, of um, what Len is saying, or is similar to what Len is saying. It would help reach trust faster. Yeah. It's the first, it's the first letter T in the trust model, Dana, right? <laughs> yeah. I think I'd respect more, which could lead to trust down the line. Yeah. Bring in the emotional side and the feeling of understanding. Hmm. Hmm. Very relationship or oriented. Wow. So, Sejra, is that how to pronounce that name? Sayer. Sayer, a, thank you. A court thank crier or a town crier, a sayer. Thank you. So no, since no. you're on mic, would you read your the comment, the chat box that you wrote in the chat box? Sure. Um, just saying that you are being transparent, uh, implying that everything you share after that point um, is really just a frame without the picture. Uh, and what's required to have the expectations, you know, so your audience has the correct expectation and you get the engagement you're looking for, you really need to start by sharing the picture as well as a frame. And that stems from an experience I had in working with a Fortune 500 medical device company here in Minneapolis, St. Paul with the term alignment. And my takeaway was so if you use the word alignment three times in one sentence, does that mean you're more aligned when you only use it once? And so the same is true with transparency. If I tell you more sincerely we're being transparent, is it really being transparent without defining it? And I would suggest, no, it isn't, so. Such a great comment. It's kind of like when somebody says, believe me when I tell you, I, that's, that's, an automatic, um, that's an automatic signal to me not to believe somebody. So really well said, thank you. <laughs> what else do we have in the chat box? I, I scrolled the wrong way. Um, we might have a way of accessing the hidden aspects and helping seeing more clearly what might be at stake. Yeah. Thank you all so much for contributing there. I love the different, the, the different angles of transparency, and yet it seems that the root really is in building relationships. So Uta, would you uh, share with us your beautiful model? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not really a model. It's, it's my thinking around the topic of transparency in an organizational um, setting. So when you talk about culture and organizations, you can't get past Edgar Schein, right? Um, he is the person associated with culture and organization. So I was looking at his model um, through the lens of transparency and I was trying to work things out around that model. And um, so at the core of his model are the assumptions that we are holding. And um, then we have the next layer, the values. 
and the artifacts or symbols. And when I was working with, or when I'm working nowadays still with my clients, um, the terminology, the wording that he chose do not does not necessarily relate very much with a corporate setting. So I often use the person, the role, and the system analogy around this. At the core of the model is the person with all of the assumption the person is holding. Yeah? The role with all of the values and traits that are projected on roles, and these roles can be um, functions or titles. And then at the end, you have the system in which the role and the person are operating. So, so that was my starting point to try to demystify the notion of transparency. And so I decided, um, what is it that, how do they relate and, and how can we connect them? And I was already saying that these assumptions are as the person at the core of everything. And so if we can manage when being transparent, when we can manage to be appropriate around what we want to share and considering at the same time, the role that we might have in the system, because the role gives us a certain status, a certain power when we are sharing information in an organizational setting. And depending on what we are saying, it comes across in a different way at the receiving end when we are saying it as a manager than when we are saying it as a private individual. Yeah. Um, so we need to be clear around what is our role and what is it that we want to share with whom in order to provide them with more direction to become clearer where the system wants to go. Yeah. Companies, organizations, they want people to know the direction so that everyone can move in the same direction. And so being transparent about that direction as well as how that direction can be achieved is very important. And that's actually how this analogy was built around, you know, the person, the role in the system and how transparency is relating to all of that. So if we, if we as individuals can really define when is it appropriate to share what with whom in order to achieve a certain thing, then this is already a big help for everyone, for us, but also for those that are listening to us. Yeah. So I don't know, I, I'm stopping here to see if, if there are any questions and comments and please just unmute yourself and and let's have a conversation about what we've shared so far before I go a little bit further. I'd be curious about how an organization goes about and creates clarity around how individuals make the decision on when, when you share what with whom. Traditionally, that's been done by the status inside of your, you know, your title inside of an organization. But in today's world, I'm not sure that that is um, an appropriate, certainly not the only appropriate way to share information for we, what you want to do. So I'd be curious about, Uda, who, what, you, what your views on this and what others' experience is on so how do you define that? You'd want some type of equitable measure to create um, an equitable culture for everyone. Right, so this really depends in my opinion and from my experience on how the company or the organization is, is, is organized, is set up. If, if they are very hierarchical, then of course it's what you're saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's usually mm -hmm. top down and it's very mm -hmm. much defined who is entitled to which piece of information at what time. And it's often called internal communication. Yeah? Um, and we have seen that this is all, it's not always leading to a desirable um, end result where people really are in the picture where there is clarity. Often it ends up being very confusing. Yeah? Um, we are moving away from 
-hmm. hierarchy is more to of flatter organization to more agile um, organizations and with that comes a certain responsibility um, that more people will have access to more information and they need to learn how to handle the information how to work with it mm -hmm. and this is a skill that needs to be trained that needs to be coached around mm -hmm. um, that that is my experience opinion on that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. happy to listen to who else wants to share yeah this is Len we, um, I guess I'm on camera I'm on voice right okay good um, yeah, I think you just said the magic word, coaching. I mean, because uh, these concepts can be uh, understood intellectually. If, you know, people have been in the business, a while, been out in the business world a while, but, uh, and um, living it is a different thing. I mean, because then, you know, just what, I'll use this analogy in the world of diversity, got it been added, there's been an E added, D E I, and the E, and I'll take, I'll take the E out of there. The diversity out of there for a second not get into that subject matter but it's equity and that whole thing even the diversity people are struggling with what equity is <laughs> so they you know they had it good so it's it's really uh um trying to define it um uh i mean earlier when we did this little exercise <clears throat> um deborah that, that deborah mentioned it's almost like i have to go to my own personal definition how i've used how I, how I see transparency for myself and then decide what to, what to say or do. Um, yeah. Because we all have a different experience of, of um, doing those things that are on, on the slide right now. I think, Len, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying. And with coaching, the beauty of coaching is helping people with perspective so they can assess where what the appropriateness of something is and how to be how to be clear about wh where we stand. So uh, yeah, Uta, the magic word is coaching. Um, <laughs> would you like to um, take us through a little bit more of that? Yeah. Those slides. So um, I, I'm a very visual person, so I like to you know draw around and and put things on paper, connect the dots and. So I was thinking, um, what is a good guide or what is a good procedure process that we can apply when we are coaching people on transparency and how to get a better handle on this? So I started with the statement that I mentioned in the beginning, all of the myths and, and misconceptions of what transparency means. So the statement is, I can share anything with anyone at any time, you know, and that is full transparency. And this is a little dangerous at times. Yeah. So the question that I put here around transparency is with whom would I like to be transparent about what and what for? So what is it that I want to achieve? Why am I sharing certain information in a transparent way? with someone? Is it because I have an agenda and I want to push certain things? Or is it because I really want the person or the people at the receiving end to get information and do something with it without me influencing them in a certain way, in a certain direction? So the sharing is really connected with what is the intention? What is my role as the person that is sharing? And what is the role of the receiver? What do I expect the person to do with the information that I'm sharing? And in the, in the best case, we will go down this little U. In the worst case, we might go and, and go off track and try to manipulate or influence um, the people that we are being transparent with under the veil of transparency, which actually is a very good word. But let's stay on the, on the better path. So when we learn what is it that we want to share, how we share it, and for what reason we are sharing it, we are moving closer to the idea of being appropriate in a certain context. Yeah? So when we have this level of appropriateness that says, you know, 
I have made my mind clear of what I would like to achieve, what is my intention, and I'm clear also on the impact that it could have in the best case scenario, but in a conversation, make sure that the impact is also achieved. Because sometimes we have good intentions, but the impact is not the way we had anticipated or planned it. So it still is in the responsibility of the sharer, the person that is being transparent, to double click and to have conversations around that. And when we achieve that level of clarity or that level of appropriateness, then clarity emerges and we can see a clearer direction of where we want to go as people that are having a conversation as a company that wants to achieve a certain goal. So for me then, transparency made it to a tool, yeah? A tool in the best case that can enable and empower people and a tool that can provide more visibility, clarity and guidance. But as with every tool, it is always in the hands of the person using the tool and how masterfully the person can apply it. And so we need to practice and to get, you know, yeah, we get to know the, the system and the experience around the word of transparency. So I don't know if that makes sense, if, if that is something that <laughs> I can see Len saying yes, but I, I only can see a limited amount of people. So happy to hear your voices and your feedback on my thinking. <laughs> and I think that it makes total sense. And the key is the intention. What is the intention? It comes back to that, that word. Um, so I can't see everybody. So I'm curious if there are any voices that, that would like to speak before we move on. Be very curious to hear about feedback about this beautiful model that Uta has, has laid out. And I think that you dreamt this in the middle of the night one night, right Uta? Yeah, I was like, how, how do I put it on paper? And sometimes I have good ideas when I'm in that wake, wake up in the morning state. <laughs> but it didn't look as tidy as that. So I did tidy it up for you. And, and I also tidied it up for the people that, that are more structured and need it really clean. So this is the same thing in, in typeface. <laughs> I was going to comment on the previous, so I had my hand up, so now I know why you didn't ask me, you didn't see me. So I, I think it's the whole thing of shine and the, like, I don't know only what you pr produced in the book, uh, which is fantastic. And like the whole thing to me can sit in an organization, it can sit in a family, it can sit in lots of modalities, what, what we're looking at here. And my experience in complexity in organizations is that the role isn't always clear to the person. They may have a job description, they may have everything, but their role to them is not made clear. And very often, you know, what you're saying in the next slide in the transparency is who I've been in meetings where it was more dictatorial and yes, there was opportunities to do the transparency piece about what's happening here, what, what you know, and that would have, what came to my mind earlier Ute, when you were talking was the team mm -hmm. and the system and the roles within the team and that's becoming very in at the moment the team but the teams were always there but there wasn't always that transparency and trust and you i know you covered that in your chapter too you know the trust mm -hmm. so there's a lot in it and what i was thinking it was i know you're doing your phd i said well, here's a research opportunity <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like to pick up on what you were saying Eilish, around the roles and um you are absolutely right even though they have descriptions they have job descriptions role descriptions um often it's also the combination of the individual in that role yeah and at times I had a situation in a company where a person had multiple hats on it's it's it, that is not it's not you know a one-off it's it's more often that people have different roles in the same system and so when they are speaking when they are sharing it's absolutely essential that they become clear 
what role are they currently having in that system, in that team, when they are speaking, when they are sharing, yeah? Because this is what they, that are at the receiving end, this is through which lens they are receiving the message and they are interpreting the message. So at times it might even be helpful, not just for the person that is speaking, to reiterate, so I'm speaking to you as the head of, or I'm speaking to you as, you know, a team member, yeah? so that it becomes really clear what they are hearing is through the lens of that role in that position in that company. Mm. And it's, it, I, what came to mind is what hat are you wearing when you're, when yeah. you are delivering this message? Yeah. 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 Is there anything else that people would like to contribute before we moved on? We move on. Yeah, I would like just to appreciate the level of abstract ideas and how clearly you can, can connect the concepts which um, which seem to be uh, on a completely different level of abstract. Um, understanding from what we are hearing or reading through the articles in business world, I don't know, LinkedIn articles and so on. So they are trying to get there, uh, but very frequently they are still on the level so that more people understand and so that it is more digestible. But the way you connect it, all those three uh, parameters is just beautiful. Oh, thank you, Julia. I'm a very practical person and I, I'm a strong believer that there is a lot of wonderful research and theory out there, but what does it help if we, if we don't know what to do with it and how to bring it to life in our realities and our everyday encounters? So, so this is really uh, very close to my heart. And if, if I did that in your opinion, then I'm very happy about that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it also, I find it so incredibly helpful as you're, you're talking people through it. So people get a, a, a little peek into that brilliant brain of yours to, to see how this works. Uta, would you please read a passage about appropriateness? Um, and folks, you can find that on page 66. Yes, right. So here we go, appropriateness. This seems to me another important aspect of transparency, especially in a corporate context, that total transparency as research has shown does not always have a positive impact. Or oh, total transparency as research has shown does not always have a positive impact, full stop. According to Christensen, that is a paper I'm referencing, transparency and the communication embodying the latter require context and a shared understanding of meaning around what is being communicated. Knowing how much transparency is appropriate and with whom is part of the success equation when building an organizational culture with transparency as one of their pillars. Transparency is important, yet it must present itself at the right time in the right dose and with the right people. Transparency is a significant success factor for organizations when establishing trust, which is vital in VUCA times, when changes are a constant part of organizational <laughs> development. Especially then, communication needs to be open, in brackets, transparent, and yet custom tailored for the different recipients in an organization. According to Rawlins, another source that I would recommend reading, orientation and a clear sense of direction make people, the individuals and organizations, the system move easier and swifter if the message is shaped so that it primarily fulfills the need of the audience for example, the employees, rather than the need of the sender, for example, management. Yeah? So that is the influencing bit that we would 
like to try to avoid. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, since appropriateness is a, a key, appropriateness and intention are keys of transparency. That was really helpful to hear. And um, I would now like to invite you all to play along. Uh, so what we'd like to do is if you have something to write with, a little pen and paper, and um, I'd like for you to reflect on, um, on your own. Think of a time where, um, or a situation in which transparency was a consideration that you, that you had to weigh. Um, it could be a personal or a professional situation but a situation where you were making a decision or not making a decision about how transparent you should be. So um, I'm curious if you are, oh, look at this, wow, excellent. Um, and just for full disclosure, to be fully transparent, we will not be going to breakout rooms because we've had such a rich conversation so why, um, you can do this as, you're, as you are um, just, just writing for yourself and we'll ask for some, some voices. But if you can bring to a situation where transparency was a consideration. And um, I'm, if, you would, if you would write into the chat box, if you don't have a situation, um, that would be helpful because I've got a million I could share with you. <laughs> But um, if you would write, if you don't have a situation where you had to consider your amount of transparency, and then we're going to um, go through this process. I don't see anything in the chat box. Okay. So the first thing that um, you can to, to consider is, was it an intentional decision to be transparent or, um, not. And then consider what role did you play in the situation? Were you the sharer or the receiver? What was um, your actual role? Were you in the position of power? Were there perceived values or traits? connected with the sharer or the receiver in that context? And then consider the system. Were things clearer or more confusing afterwards? So those are some things that you can think about in your situation. And then consider how appropriate was it to be transparent and how much did transparency contribute to more clarity and direction? So we'll give you a minute to, to think about that and then we'll ask for some voices. Okay, so um, I would love to hear some voices and I understand that, um, is Lynn's hand raised? Lynn, would you like to share with us? Sure. Um, I was thinking about a time when um, we had a crisis at a corporation and um, I was in the, the position of having to gather the group of decision makers in terms of what needed to happen. And there was a lot of discussion about how transparent would we be to the employees. And um, I think it was a very um, deep and thoughtful discussion. And we examined it from a lot of different angles, much like Uta, you had recommended. Uh, what was your intention behind sharing? And we actually, um, counter to the culture, which was less transparent, we were actually more transparent in the situation in order to have, allow all employees to have as much information they could so they could be empowered to make more decisions independently without having to raise everything up the, the hierarchy chain. 
Mm, yeah. And how did that land? Uh, I think there was um, several individuals that were uncomfortable with that because they had grown up in a culture of hold tight to the information and very patriarchal. Um, but I would say that it allowed the organization to be much more nimble in the crisis than it would have been before. Mm. And it probably also um, demonstrated the intention that they had was a good one and they would share what was possible at the time when it was possible to share it. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes also very often actually when it's decisions that do not just influence what's happening inside of the company but also have an influence to how the companies may be seen or attacked from the outside, depending on what they are talking about, there has to be a certain level of cautious, cautiousness that you have to be careful not to leak any information. And so there is a responsibility to keep in mind as well. And um, by, by trying to be as transparent as one can be in order not to cause any harm, that is also uh, paramount, really important. Yeah? And it was really important for um, the corporation to keep their clients mm. uh, by having this transparency over other organizations. I think yeah. it really, um, as you mentioned before, the trust that had always been established was furthered rather than broken. Mm. Mm. Yeah, good. Thank you Thank for sharing. You. Um, Can I ask a question of Lynn from that experience? Uh, once you are more re more transparent and more revealing in a crisis situation, does that change the definition of transparency or the standard um, in moving forward past the crisis? That genie doesn't go back in the bottle very easily. I think that's a wonderful question. And I think that a lot of the senior executive team wanted the genie to go back in the bottle after the crisis was over. And um, so there was a lot, of, um, a lot of discussion about going back to the benefits of what a more transparent culture brought to the corporation. Um, but it, there was a lot, there was still a lot of uh, growth opportunity in that. <laughs> mm. Maybe we can maybe we can look at this like um, a thermostat, like a control unit on a heating. Yeah, you, you you turn it up a little bit, and when it gets too hot, you need to you need to reduce or at least regulate it again. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a good analogy, and I think also I would add to it, Uta, and some individuals do not do not have access to the thermos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. And Sarah, did you have uh, something else that you wanted to contribute? And you're oh, uh, No, not, not really. I have um, just been um, uh, perhaps like Lynn, being in corporate communications, working in crises, your, your transparency meter is always on um, because one slip and you could be in really deep trouble. Um, the, the skills in managing your mind and remembering what you have said to whom and what you can't say to whom um, gets to be a bit of a chatter in your head after a while, especially when you're working under great stress. But um, yeah, that's just my experience. Hmm. Yeah, and I was just, if I could add to that, the word that came into my mind, I don't think we mentioned it so far, is judgment. When when things aren't transparent, I notice that in organizations, there's a lot of judgment. And we tell ourselves, you know what Judith would say, stories. And we tell ourselves stories and we make them up and they're not true stories. And that's a thing. I think that's a, um, what would you call it, a spin-off of that, not being yeah. transparent. Yeah. Agreed. And that's why in crisis work, that's what we call rumor control <laughs> because yeah. those stories come out and people voice those stories. And the next thing you know, okay, just to calm everyone down, this is not true. So yeah, that's absolutely correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't forget, Karen, I'm, 
I was just yeah. about to ask if we yeah. could address Karen's question um, because time is flying. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me as a leader, how transparent does one need to be with bad news, Karen? What is the bad news? Is, is it relating to the next post that you made or is that two separate things? It, it was actually a little bit, I sort of hit the return and it meant to be, yeah, it did mean to be in the all in the same mix. So, you know, it was a situation where not so much where you would, you know, where you would in that position of influence where you were, you know, kind of leading the community, if you like, and then you failed. I mean, you broke that trust that you just built up, actually. And that's kind of what happened. And uh, so and it's making me think about, you know, well, apart from did I do the right thing or not, you know, in not telling anybody, but the intention. So it comes back to that intention piece, doesn't it? So the intention was good to not be transparent about what I'd just done. And um, I mean, it's a story that I tell now because it's about, you know, how do you build a culture of safety? Um, so that sort of all wraps into the same conversation but for me. But yeah, so that was really about that. But And as a leader, you know, and I think what uh, Saya and Lynn were just talking about was that transparency as a leader. You know, sometimes it's tough. And I was actually having a coaching session today and I said to somebody, you know, when, do you, when is not enough and when is too much? Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts about that, Uta? Yeah, I think I think that is a very important conversation to have, because if it if it's not enough and anyone you know has an if someone has an accident or something happens to someone, then of course this is a very bad situation for the leader for the person that is suffering. Um, and the same way is if if you if you are too open, that could also cause harm. So it's it's really looking very carefully of what is the context and what could be the scenarios really lo really looking at the different scenarios and um very often when, when i saw your note about the bad news for me restructuring comes to mind many times so so when companies need to restructure and it can just be a restructuring where people are moved to different places it's not even layoffs or redundancies connected with it but just the idea that things have to change to the system upsets people and they start worrying, how can we break the news to the people? And when they have that anxiety already in themselves, it radiating out, even if it's nothing bad at all to be shared, because it's just moving people to different boxes. But the anxiety around it can already spoil the good intention because people hear it, people feel it. Um, and they they come up with the movies that um, Eilish mentioned. Maybe there is more. Maybe this is just the first step. We don't know what else is coming. And they go all up into alert mode. And so it, it is an art with transparency. And there is no recipe. Um, where you say this is this is what you need to do and it will be perfect. Huh? So I'm sorry that one I can't give to you. <laughs> but but you you summed it up really beautifully that there is no cookie cutter recipe and it is really tuning into your intention and the impact that you would like to have to end on a Judith note. So this um, hour has flown by and I do want to remind everybody that the third Wednesday of each month is the regulars table. So mark your calendar right now for May 19th, where Vicki Mita will be talking about chapter her chapter in the book, chapter seven, which is called How to Transform Company Culture and Create Engagement. And for those of you who are unfamiliar at this moment, um, we are all Uta and some of the, the other folks on the call today, we are members of the European CIQ Collective. We represent diverse perspectives, cultures, and experience across Europe and beyond. Based on our experiences, both in the corporate world as well as in other niches of our lives, we as a collective can help you change the way you lead and navigate in an ever-changing landscape by changing your conversations and weaving your own golden threads. Hence the, the the title of the book, Changing Conversations for a Changing World. You can um, order this book online um, on Amazon, 
And Tanya is going to put all kinds of goodies into the chat box, including the link to buy this book, as well as a link to Uta's website. And if I may boast just for a moment on Uta's behalf, um, there is another book that you can find that is just published hot off the press. I opened my envelope today for um, Uta, another book by Uta. So um, please go and check out Uta's website as well as Amazon. And folks, thank you all so much for joining us today. Uta, last words? Oh yes, thank you so much, everyone. I will I will have a nice evening reading the chat box again and getting that oxytocin rush from the good conversations that we had. Thank you for the time you spend. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you to Tanya and Deborah for being by my side and for you all joining me. So thank you so much and see you next month for Vicky's Regulus Table. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.